You are powerful, you're superheroes, you're loud, but today, we've brought some instruments. But, but do we want to do instruments just yet, Michael? Wait, hold on, hold on. This is a pun. This is a pun. It's not a musical instrument, it's a scientific instrument. We got science. Yeah, see that right there? This is a laser gun. We're gonna measure you guys because a few days ago I was in Singapore and those fans were loud and they were excited, but I've got a decibel meter here and we're gonna measure just exactly how loud. Save your energy. Okay, save we, gotta, we gotta save your loudness. You gotta save your loudness because here's what I said to Michael. I said, Michael, the fans in Sydney are the best fans, the loudest fans. In Singapore, they made it to 113 decibels. 113, let me put that in perspective. 90 to 95 decibels for an extended period of time causes hearing damage. That's right, it is against the law to make you work in a place without hearing protection if it's over 90 decibels. So this room, we've already clocked it at 102 decibels. Backstage. Before we got now, out here. Here's the challenge. I think you guys can do it. Well, it's going to be a tough challenge. 125 decibels is where pain begins in your head. That is right. You will feel physical pain if we can make it to 125 decibels. I can see some of you blocking your ears already. That is smart. Yeah. And remember, decibels are a logarithmic system, all right? So, to go up just three more decibels, you will need to be twice as loud. This is not going to be easy, but I think Sydney can do it, maybe. You have to prove me wrong, all right? I'm gonna start up the meter. It's gonna be super hard, so we gotta, we gotta like, refresh your lungs for a minute. I know you've been screaming all night, but this has gotta be the loudest yell you have done in the entire evening because this is for science, this is to set a record, this is to break your ears right here tonight. Are we ready? Down from three. Yeah. Are you ready? Okay, we're shining a laser on Michael's hand. See this? And this actually reads his temperature. It is currently, his hand is about 28 degrees Celsius. 28 degrees Celsius. He's not that hot, all right? He's, he's decent. I don't know if you can see that. Are you hot? Oh my goodness. Well, maybe we should try uh, to do a test between Michael and myself. What do you think? To see who's hotter. But we're going to use the magic and the science of friction. <laughs> yeah! That's my trick. That is the trick. I sweat a lot. There's a lot of evaporative cooling, so my hands are actually not that warm. But I'm going to rub them together, and we're going to challenge to see who can be the hottest. Okay, I'm going to give him five seconds, and five seconds only. He's going to make his hands as hot as he can in five seconds. Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay. I'm ready with the gun. Ready? Three. Two, one, go! One, two, three, four, five. 30 
Especially so friction, friction still made them hotter, but that's not very good. That's not. That's one not the, very hot. One of the guys in Singapore got to 40. He got to 40. Uh, we had a high starting point. Right, let's do. Let's do me. Let's do Derek. Let's do right, Here we go. Right. <laughs> for one, once and for all, who's hotter, Derek or Michael? Temperature wise, put it on the ground. I mean, you know. Okay. You have five seconds. Go. Five. Four, three, two, one, be hot. Be hot. 35.1. That was scientific what I was doing there. I've been put in my place. <laughs> you guys did a good job yelling. What I want to do now is share with you some important information. A Q and A. Let's bring, let's bring uh... Maz. Maz, come on out here. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Not Wait, can I take your Whatever. temperature? Yeah. It's your surface temperature. Okay. Show me your hand. Okay. Twenty-five. Is that? Twenty-five. That's kind of chilly. No, no, no. It's not chilly. It's cool. <laughs> Very good. You're welcome. Hey, can I just say, guys, that when you were rubbing your hands together, the view from backstage. Did that look creepy? <laughs> oh my god. I should be hot. Like I should be blushing to see your cute little butts wiggling like that. It was really cool. Wait, 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 wait. Let me check. <laughs> Thirty-three point eight. Yeah. Okay. Hey, so. we're all on stage together. Can I ask you a couple of questions? <laughs> Can I ask you guys a couple of questions? Yes, please ask away. And That's we've got a video that we want to roll as well. Oh, really? Which I believe there's some video footage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Should let's we watch check it out. First? Let's do it. Let's, let's do watch that some video. First all right, let's do it. Out. I'm here at the University of Sydney. Here are some facts about great white sharks. These just are tall. Some of them are over 100 meters. Book or the hard drive? The temperatures. How do their temperatures compare? Electrochemical combination mimics the input of the brain. It's incredibly able to walk again. It is virtually, it is impossible. This is gyroscopic precession. Hey, 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 sauce, Michael here. Sound, unreactivity. How much does a shadow weigh? You know, those moments where the current situation feels like it's happened before. Yeah, we've done this. This is great. Oh, okay, okay, we gotta get back to the show. I wanna know, um, how, like, individually, how. Like, how did you create these personas that are, like, world famous now? How did it all start? Does anyone know where the name Vsauce comes from? No. Does any, is there anyone that would know? One person? I've been watching it for years. Oh, there he is. Here is yeah. Here's the guy. Yeah. It came from a fake name generator. It means nothing. Oh, sure. It just came out of <laughs> yeah, right. the, the randomness. Funny enough, Derek and I have been working on an episode about... That very topic, randomness. Yeah, really? it's, gonna, it's gonna blow your minds. It's uh, what we've been collabing on in Sydney, and I'm very excited to release it. It'll probably be a week at least. Yeah, but it's gonna be super fun. It's gonna be super awesome. That's why it takes us extra time. <laughs> I love that. Now, out of all the things that you've done, and there's been a lot, is there like one standout oh, moment that okay. you have loved the most on this journey so far? My favorite moment on the, uh, you know what it is? It's being in Sydney. Yeah. yeah. Derek and I have come with a couple of facts about Australia. Okay, let's hear them. All right, who should go first? Uh, you go first. You go first. This is Michael has learned a lot about Australia in the last few days. I've been teaching him, showing him around, uh, and and this is the this is what he's learned. This is kind of crazy. Get ready to have your mind sort of, if not blown, definitely tickled. This is really so, cool. This there, is really cool. Check is, it out. There's an extinct Aboriginal language called Imbabaram which was completely developed independently of English. And when we started to archive their language and ask them what they called different things in the world, I kid you not, this happened. We asked them, what do you call that? And they said, dog. 
And we said, <laughs> no, we call that a dog. You must not have misunderstood. What do you call it in your language? And they said, are you kidding me? We call that a dog also. <laughs> yeah. What? Completely independent languages came up with and used the exact same word to describe the exact same thing. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Now, maybe it's magic, but probably not. It's probably probabilities. If you think of how many words there are, how many people and cultures and languages and things to name, it's actually not surprising that it happened once that we know of. Yeah, I, I still think it's very surprising. Yeah. <laughs> Also go, also, go dogs, right? Like, good job. Dogs being named the same thing. That is awesome. That, yeah. is, that yeah. is excellent. That's a pretty amazing fact. I did not know that. And I'm Australian, so... You learn something new every day, and that's I why just life did. is so sweet. I just did. Now, you guys are obviously both very smart. Is there a word... My favourite word is discombobulated, and I feel like it makes me sound smart. Is there a takeaway tip that you can give everyone here? Like, a word that they can use in a sentence to make them sound a little bit smarter than what they might actually be? I, I was going to throw out my word here. When I was a kid, the word that I tried to impress people with was anti-disestablishmentarianism. Wow. Yes. That's a good one. That's yes. A good do you know what it means? I believe it's something. I, 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 it's like going against the church or something. The standard. Rebelling. It's Is rebelling. it a fancy way of rebelling? It's a fancy way of rebelling. There you go. Can we get it one more time? anti disestablishmentarianism Okay. It probably won't fit on a hashtag, but it's a good word. Do you have a word? A hashtag. <laughs> uh, anti dis. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna be a man of the people here. Okay. The longest word that is commonly used, meaning in the top 1,000 or so, is the word uncharacteristically. Uncharacteristically? Yeah. Because how often do people talk about anti-disestablishmentarianism? Well, how, how, how often well, do people talk about did. things uncharacteristically? Well, that's quite uncharacteristic of them. It perhaps. is. <laughs> However, uncharacteristically, I'm going to stick by uncharacteristically. It's the word of okay. the people. I'm totally happy with that. Are you guys happy with that? Do you feel like Stage, I do have one question. I watched the video where you went into the room of silence. Has anyone seen that video? Okay. Can I just say for the record that room was nothing like this? Yes, yeah, the, it was the nothing opposite. like this room. Wait, wait, wait. How loud is it in that room? In that room, it is about. Wait, hold on, stop, stop. Keep in mind that a whisper is about 30 decibels. 30 decibels. A conversation whisper. is about 60, and you guys tonight were 122. Okay. With that in mind. With that in mind, and also zero is kind of the limit of human hearing. Correct. So this room is about minus nine decibels. Minus nine, which means the only thing you can hear in this room is yourself. You are by far the loudest thing in that room. What, what putting, part of you do you hear? By putting yourself in that room, you uh, increase the, the level right up to whatever you are. So, so you can hear your breathing, you can hear your clothes crinkling, you can hear it when you swallow, you can even hear your heartbeat. Wow, you can hear it. That's that was, intense. But also, like, an incredible thing to go... Not many people get to be within themselves that intimately, if you will. And you got to do that. I think I, I was fascinated by this because I talk for a living, so I'm never silent. So I just, well, I was like, being in a room where you can hear your own heartbeat and your clothes pinkle, like that would actually be an amazing journey. So I just want to say congrats and good on you. Thank you very much. Thank you.